I practice the art of living around the world as opposed to merely traveling through it. It's allowed me the chance to really deeply explore uh, the, the local culture where I'm living and the food and, and the way people live, which has been a lifelong dream of mine, really. You know, I, I painted murals and trade for accommodation in Hawaii. I led eco treks on llamas in Australia. Uh, I house sat in no less than a dozen different countries. I've lived on boats in the Caribbean on five boats spanning three countries. I apprenticed with a shaman in Peru for two years. So when I started traveling full time in 2006, the term digital nomad did not even exist. The term location independent didn't exist. In fact, travel blogging wasn't even a thing. Blogs at that time, I could barely define a blog, but blogs at that time were really just glorified travel journals. I of course started one of these travel journals as a way to just chronicle my travels and for my own benefit really more than anything else. But what I did realize fairly shortly was that with uh, an internet connection and a laptop anywhere in the world, along with my penchant for the written word, I could earn a living as a freelance writer. So I started to develop a career as a freelance writer as I was traveling. And in so doing, then suddenly the travel blogging industry grew up and around me. I don't think I was really so much a pioneer as much in the right place at the right time. I've been able to parlay my expertise as a former certified financial planner with my experience as a traveler to write and create a niche about the finance of travel. So on my own website, which is theprofessionalhobo.com, I teach people how to travel full-time in a financially sustainable way. I've always had some sort of innate financial planning proclivities. Uh, so from the time that I started working regular jobs, uh, you know, my late teens, I actually saved and invested a, a lot of money. And this ultimately served me very well in, in later years uh, through the, the glory of compound growth and compound interest. So when a friend of mine started working for a financial firm in Canada, I expressed an interest in what he was doing. And uh, I followed shortly thereafter and it was the perfect thing for me to be doing at the time. I was running my own financial planning practice, so I was, I was uh, an entrepreneur. I've always been an entrepreneur at heart, so I was able to build my own business. And more specifically, for me, financial planning is not about investing and in numbers and charts and graphs. Uh, for me, when I sat down with my financial planning clients, I would put all the graphs to the side and I would say, what do you want to do with your life? So I read a study at one point that indicated that once you earn uh, more than a certain amount of money, and I believe that number was $70,000, your happiness does not increase with your income the way you would expect it to. And I discovered this to be true myself. Like anybody else, I, I aspired towards earning six figures. You know, it's like, woo, when I earn six, six figures, I'll be successful and happy and everything will be good. I noticed once I achieved that milestone, once I achieved what you know society would generally define as success, I wasn't actually taking home any more money. Part of that was because in order for my business to generate more income, I had to pay more money out. I was hiring employees and I had to pay extra liability insurances and there was all kinds of operational expenses that cost me in order to earn more money. And then also too, I had to walk the talk. Uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't exactly demonstrate to clients that I could manage their multi-million dollar portfolios while driving a beat up Civic. So I had to get a nicer car and I had to walk the talk and I had to wine and dine and while these were you know obviously driving a nice car and having some nicer clothes and, and going out for nice meals certainly is a quality of life improvement for me at the end of the day I didn't feel that the amount that I had to work to earn that money was justifying the 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 outcome for me so that was about the time when I realized I had to make a change uh, in my life uh, and it was one that ultimately led to me earning 10 times less money, but ultimately actually discovering that I was happier in doing so. My transition from full-time financial planning into full-time travel was well, I don't know that there's ever such thing as a smooth transition when you're looking at a life change like that. Uh, it was inspired by burning out. I was working uh, very hard, too hard in many ways, and feeling very unfulfilled. And uh, the last traditional vacation that I took was to South Africa, and I went for a month. 
And people at home thought I was crazy. You're taking off a whole month. Oh my gosh, that's irresponsible for your business. And I just, I was hoping that a month would be long enough for me to satisfy what travel really means to me. And what travel means to me is I want to break bread around dinner tables around the world. I want to understand what what's a going concern. How do the children play? What, what do people talk about? How do people live? Where do they shop? What do they eat? I wanted to understand how people live around the world. And I figured a month in South Africa would be long enough for me to figure that out. Well, of course, I left with more questions than answers. And it was then that I realized if I really wanted to satisfy my own lifelong dream of understanding cultures and travel around the world, I had to make it a lifestyle. And I couldn't wait another 30 years for conventional retirement in order to satisfy this dream because I was afraid that I would be unable or unwilling to do the things that I wanted to do in my later years. So I took a leap of faith, a responsible one, I'm ever the financial planner, but I took a leap of faith into, uh, into the travel lifestyle. I sold everything I owned and I left on a one-way ticket not knowing where I would go, what I would do, how I would earn money or how long it would even last. But 12 years later, I'm here to say it's entirely possible to live on the road full time. In fact, my cost of living on the road full time has consistently been less than it ever cost me to live in one place. So I'm not going to categorically say that earning less money is more satisfying than earning more money because as far as I'm concerned, it really depends on what you're doing with your life and how satisfying that is. So now I look at a map of the world and I see all these places that I haven't been. And yet, I still allow my destinations to choose me. I'm not on a mission to tick off every country in the world. Uh, it's not a numbers game for me. It really is about having unique opportunities to live around the world. Live richer does not mean to be rich. For me, living richer is having a full, fulfilling life whatever that means, to be surrounded by people who I love, who love me, to have camaraderie, connection, compassion, uh, to have adventure, uh, to have new experiences and familiar experiences. For me, living richly is having a life that's full of stories that I love to tell people and to wake up every morning excited to get out of